It was in chickens in the early 1950s that B cells were first suspected as the source of antibody-mediated immunity. Since then, avian B cells have shed light on many molecular and cellular events, including those genetic modifications that make antibody response to antigens possible. The chicken's B cells arise in sites of embryonic hematopoiesis, the yolk sac, blood, kidneys, liver, and spleen. In these organs, stem cells differentiate into pro-B cells and VDJ recombination, or gene rearrangement, begins. In humans, there are multiple different copies of V, D, and J gene segments coding for the antibody heavy chain, and V and J for the antibody light chain. In each B cell, gene rearrangement may cut and join together a unique combination of these gene segments, resulting in different B cells possessing different functional antibody genes and a repertoire of B cells with diverse antibody structures. Chickens, however, lack this multitude of VDJ gene segments to draw upon. So even though gene rearrangement in avian embryos does succeed in the expression of immunoglobulins, without the varied VDJ combinations, how do they generate their antibody diversity? The answer lies elsewhere in the embryo, where dendritic cells are colonizing a gut-associated lymphatic organ, the bursa of Fabricius. Perhaps guided by these dendritic cells' chemoattractants, B cells will migrate to the bursa. Those with surface immunoglobulin cross the bursal basement membrane and rapidly divide inside epithelial buds. With roughly three B cells in each of the 10,000 epithelial buds, dividing every 10 hours, their population can reach 10 million before hatch. And during this time, the immunoglobulin DNA is changing again. While each B cell's newly rearranged antibody locus is producing functional immunoglobulins, their genetic homogeneity stunts the antibody diversity needed for adaptive, specific humoral response. This is where a collection of upstream pseudogenes come into play. In a series of events thought to be triggered by activation-induced cytidine deaminase, a protein also active in class switch recombination and somatic hypermutation, a cytidine base is converted to a uracil. These are then detected and excised by uracil DNA glycosylase, leaving the DNA open to be targeted and cleaved by an apurinic endonuclease. If such a nick were to occur on both strands, Repair machinery will surround a single strand and search out a nearby homologous pseudogene. This pseudogene is used as a template to extend the broken DNA strand. The immunoglobulin gene is converted, leaving the pseudogene intact. In this way, gene conversion can sprinkle from several to hundreds of pseudogene bases into antibody loci and can occur multiple times using different pseudogene donors in each B cell. After the chick hatches, it begins a lifelong acquaintance with antigens, which can travel through the gut and into the bursal lumen. Here, the epithelial buds containing B cells have changed into follicles. Follicle-associated epithelial cells transport antigen into an inner medulla, 
and B cells migrate again, crossing the follicle's corticomedullary junction into an outer cortex. Rapid cell division and gene conversion happen primarily in this outer cortex. Unsuccessful B cells undergo apoptosis, while newly diversified ones may migrate out of the bursa. In this manner, chickens derive a diverse B cell repertoire using methods rarely seen in humans. Avian B cells, B for bursa, with their capacity for gene conversion, continue today as a powerful research model, advancing the fields of genetics, cell biology, and immunology.